Hello, everybody. Um, so this is my good friend, Court Jones. Howdy. Say hello, everybody. Um, so Court and I have known each other for a while. He was my caricature teacher like 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we recently launched a caricature course on Proka.com. So you can go to Proka.com slash caricature if you want to learn more about that. Um, so today, Court's going to be drawing thumbnail sketches of celebrity women for you guys. Um, if you're participating in the course, you're going to enjoy it. Just going to be more uh, examples of the lesson that he just did on thumbnail sketching. Um, so he's not going to be taking suggestions from you guys on what he's going to draw. He already has uh, a bunch of photos prepared because in order to do good thumbnail sketches, you have to have good reference. So he wanted to make sure he had those prepared for you. Um, so he's he's going to do people like Rihanna, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, Michelle Obama, and Daisy Ridley, uh, and a few others. Yeah, a few but, others. We have time. Yeah, and then at the end, if if he has time and if he likes one of his thumbnail sketches, he'll spend like thirty minutes and do a a rough sketch of it, like a little more a little more polished than a thumbnail sketch, but still rough. Um, so. So he's not taking suggestions, but he will take your questions. So if you want to ask him anything uh, about caricature and anything about the drawings he's doing, feel free. And if you you can start asking questions now in the chat. Um, so anyway, I'll let you take over. Thank you, Stan. Awesome. All right. So you guys enjoy. All righty. Now get out. <laughs> All right. Welcome once again. Thanks for hey, see ya. Thanks for joining me for this uh, demo and Q and A. There will be some question and answering. Um, but I'm going to talk a lot. I'm going to try to talk about my process when I'm doing thumbnail sketches because that is the most recent assignment, uh, the most recent lesson that we have out. Um, the the most important aspect to a caricature, a lot of people say, might be exaggeration. I personally think it's likeness. Uh, it has to look like them, otherwise it's not anything. Uh, but exaggeration is, I think, the first step. That's the thing I like to tackle first when I'm designing uh, my portrait, my caricature portrait. And I do that in the thumbnail sketching phase. The, and the thumbnails are just small, quick concept sketches. I try not to spend just a couple more, not more than just a couple minutes on, on each one. And I am, they're very sloppy, they're very scratchy, loose and fluid, and that's that's great. That's that, What I want to do is get my mind racing, my mind thinking and, and translating those ideas to my hand as quickly as possible. And I don't have to worry about anatomy, about bone structure or perspective. You know, usually the eyes are all wonky, they're not, things aren't gonna line up right. They are basically messy sketches, and they're real small. And it's the point is I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on each one because I don't wanna get emotionally attached to any one design too quickly. Uh, that's very important in caricature. I think sometimes people fall into the trap of getting a successful likeness on one of their earlier sketches and they don't want to deviate from that at all and they're missing out on a whole wide range of exaggeration choices that they could be making. So even if you get a good first sketch, do another one and then another and then another and try to make each sketch, each head completely different from the previous one if you can. If you go with a long, thin head shape on the first one, try a wide head shape or a triangular head shape or a combination of, of head shapes. And uh, it's you can be surprised at how many ways and varieties you can exaggerate someone and still have it look like them. Uh, so with that in mind, that's the, the, the focus of what I'm going to do today is just explore exaggeration through thumbnail sketching, through concept sketching. I have a few, uh, like Stan said, a few uh, uh, choices to pick from here. Let's start with, uh, see I like uh, Gal Gadot's face, played the uh, Wonder Woman recently in the movie. I haven't actually seen the Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> uh, or, or it's not, a, yeah, I guess the Batman Superman movie, I haven't seen that either. I've been really behind on my movie watching. But I liked her face and uh, she presented kind of a challenge I think because a lot of times uh, young attractive women present caricature artists with difficulty as far as what to exaggerate or how to draw them and still make it look uh, feminine but funny and pretty um, at the same time because you can definitely have a, a caricature that's funny and cute it's, it's it's kind of a weird dance you're doing between um, 
between the shapes and between flattery and between humor. Uh, but that's why it's not easy, and that's why we're all studying it. Uh, now, the first thing that I notice about her face is that the lower face takes up a good portion of the real estate on her head. Like, she doesn't have a broad, wide cranium. Her cranium kind of tapers inward as it goes up. So I'm going to have probably sort of an upside-down or a pyramid sort of shape to her face where it's narrow at the top, wider at the bottom. Um, her eyebrows are sort of heavy. Her uh, lips are pretty full. Um, her nose is not especially small or big. It's just kind of there. Um, the people who we consider most attractive tend to be people who have essentially average features that are closer to the norm or closer to the, 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 the average head. Uh, it's not always the case. There can be very distinctive looking attractive people uh, as well. I mean, people that have large noses or something like David Duchovny is also considered very attractive by some, I, I don't know. But uh, but he has a very unique look to him that's kind of easier to caricature. In her case, she is, again, more of a standard uh, attractive female type. But there are these little uh, hints and clues I can dig out of her likeness that will help me uh, uh, figure out how to caricature her. Okay, let's go ahead and start with, uh, I'm going to use the picture on the upper right here as my first uh, inspiration. What I want to do is try to avoid any kind of human head shape, that typical portrait head uh, that we're all used to drawing when we're doing portraits. So try to get out of that as soon as possible. Otherwise, you tend to rely on that, and you don't ever want to break out of that habit. So I'm going to make that forehead area kind of small, too, by keeping your eyes up pretty high. And my lines are just quick, loose, and gestural. They're not... You know, I'm going to do maybe another pass on all of these lines. It's, this isn't like the exact shapes that I'm going to end up with, but it's what I'm starting with. It's the, it's the first stage of the thumbnail sketch. I'm going to make, actually, I see her cheeks as being pretty wide, pretty wide cheekbones here. Okay, now that I'm developing, I probably won't do a super wide jaw now. I'm not going to do that perfect pyramid like I was thinking earlier on first glance. Uh, just you got to evolve with the shapes as you're designing them. Let's get rid of that wide jaw. That's not going to work. At least not for this particular sketch. I may try it later, but yeah, there we go. If I had to exaggerate her nose in any direction, I would probably say shorter than average would be a good way to go rather than longer than average. So keep the nose pretty small. Uh, any questions coming in yet, John? Uh, yeah. Would you recommend caricature as a drawing exercise, even if you do not want to go into that area of drawing? Yeah, I would say it never hurts. Um, it's it's just caricatures are just fun if you want to do them as a diversion in your spare time. Um, if you have no interest in whatsoever in doing caricatures as part of your illustration portfolio or for your job. Um, but you still like them, uh, that's great. That's a great reason to do them, actually, just because you like the idea of doing them. Um, and you never know. You may end up liking it so much, you end up incorporating it into your work. You'll never know unless you try. So, uh, yeah, if anything at all picks your interest in art, I would say definitely go for it. If it's Whether it's sculpture or computers or animation or anything you've always wanted to do, just, uh, yeah, just because it maybe does, you don't see a practical application for it in your, in your career doesn't mean you can't uh, play around doing it. Uh, Matthias wants to know, how many sketches do you recommend uh, before reaching a final result? Uh, it really depends. It really varies. Um, depends on how much time you have, too. But uh, if, you're, if you're doing these lessons and you're not really used to doing caricature thumbnail sketches, I would say do at least half a dozen before you try to settle on any one particular face. Um, you know, sometimes I just let the size of the paper determine how many sketches I do. Maybe I'll just fill up one page, and that will be... That's what I do. That's you know, I'll fill up that page of thumbnail sketches. Even if I got three successful sketches on that whole page, you know, I, I'm not going to stop with those first three. I just want to explore the possibilities and just keep on going if I have more room. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to spend too much time on this particular one here. Kind of like the way that's going. Okay, so that's one possibility. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that disappear for a moment. 
and let's start a new one. I'm going to try from a different uh, angle. I'm going to try the front view down at the bottom left. Maybe I'll try a long sort of, I don't know, bullet-shaped head. And just, I try to let the photo guide me. People can look really different from one photo to the next. Uh, their head shape can make you do completely different decisions. And that's OK. Uh, just go with whatever you're seeing in the moment. Of course, if you have a vision in your mind of what you think it should look like based on your knowledge of that person, like maybe you saw the her in movies or on TV and you, you kind of want to explore certain shapes that aren't you don't see in this particular photo, that's fine too. There's no rules for, for this really. Uh, I mean, there are some, but uh, at this early stage, just explore, just be loose and, and don't try not to hinder yourself by any kind of expectations that you place on yourself or anyone that's going to, you think, see your sketchbook or your drawings. You don't want to be timid or uh, worried about, uh, you know, ruining your sketchbook pages with bad, terrible drawings. Bad, terrible drawings are your friend at this stage because th that means you're, you know, you're at least you're trying and you're putting yourself out there and you're taking chances. I spent a little bit too much time on the hair for a thumbnail sketch. That tends to happen when I talk about these. While I'm doing them, I tend to spend a little too much time on them. Let's try some really thick eyebrows. There we go. Uh, Free Candy wants to know, where would you define the border uh, between funny and, and insulting a caricature? Mm, I never I, fine line or? <laughs> um, you know I I'm one of those artists I, I I see people who draw a lot more extreme than I do personally and and I, I never wrestle with that issue I never really border on what I think is is offensive or insulting um, I don't particularly aim to insult anyone that's not a goal of mine when I do these caricatures uh, so I never wrestle with that issue. I just draw what I think I need to draw. The more you second guess yourself and, and wonder if it's going to be too insulting, uh, you're going to get in your own head and you're going to hinder your ability to make good choices. Um, you know, I guess I do sometimes worry about it on a very abstract level when I'm when I'm doing a commission for someone, and you know, it's, it's I'm drawing the person that it's going that who's paying for it, and. Uh, and that might unconsciously affect, I think, some of my decisions. But uh, yeah, it's not something I really ever consciously worry about. I just, I just want to make it funny, and I want to make it look like them. Those are the only criteria I worry about when I'm sketching. Okay, this one's okay. Not, not such a big success on this one. But uh, let's move on to the next. Let's try the other photo, the uh, one in the upper left. Let's try a really wide head shape. Hopefully I'll, you know, loosen up the more that I do these. And that, that's kind of the point of doing lots and lots of thumbnail sketches is you, you're a little uptight at first. You're a little thinking a little too much about likeness in the beginning. And uh, the more you do it, the more you sit down and sketch and keep at it, the more you're not worried about that so much. You're just thinking more about exaggeration and how far can you push it. And that's the headspace you want to be in when you're at this stage. How do you approach caricaturing body parts uh, compared to caricaturing the face, head, and features? Well, um, we will have a video later on in the course about caricaturing bodies. Um, I think that's video six or lesson six. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit now. Um, essentially, the same rules apply to caricaturing the body as caricaturing the face. Is You want to uh, exaggerate your subject off of a standard average, whatever you, know, you think that may be. Uh, if the person's overweight, you're going to maybe highlight that. If they're more muscular in, than the average, you're going to exaggerate their muscularity. And the more you know about anatomy of the body, the, the, the better off you'll be because you'll be able to caricature uh, more accurately uh, the things like muscles and the way uh, fat, you know, sits on the body. Um, you know, you might make someone skinnier and leaner too. There's, there's no, uh, you know, you just got to go, again, like I said, off of the average and uh, not... Uh, worry about insulting the person. Uh, it's just uh, you're what you're doing is trying to make people laugh. So, kind of the more outrageous, the better. 
Um, but I still like to personally have my caricatures of the bodies and everything else grounded in reality. Uh, I, I do like to be sort of not too out there just because the work that I do for clients, you know, magazines and newspapers, you're, the more important thing is that you're telling the story, the editorial illustration. It's, it's, it's whatever message it is, if it's just someone standing at a podium giving a, a talk and, uh, you know, you have to convey that. So it can't be a, two Looney Tunes. I mean, it has to be uh, somewhat uh, grounded and uh, based in, in the anatomy of the form. So you take what's there and you just, uh, you, you work with it and, you exaggerate it, and uh, like I said, we will go over it more in detail in, in, the, in the lesson down the road about the body. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I didn't think that that would work when I was going into it, but I, I do kind of like that. Um, one thing I might do, maybe cut in the jaw a little bit there. Okay, cool, and I'm gonna try one more from the photo on the, the bottom there, bottom right. I don't always work from different photos. I sometimes do exaggerate over and over from just the same photo. And that's, uh, and that's a different type of exercise, really. I'm, here I'm using the different photos and the different head angles to inspire my exaggeration choices. Uh, but uh, when you're using just the same photo from sketch to sketch, it's, it's a little different. And you'll see that when I do that in a uh, sketch a little later tonight. This one really angular. See, the, the head shape helps establish the mood and, and the whole direction and flow of the caricature. I almost always do the head shape first. Not always, but almost always. It's just the, that tends to be my habit, and I think it works out pretty well because, like I said, the head shape establishes the flow of everything. If you start with the features first, it, you tend to just meander and kind of get lost. I, I don't know. It might work for some people out there. Some people might prefer the inside-out approach to drawing, but uh, I've never found it to work for me. This one I think is going to have a very large mouth because I left a very large space for that. Modifying the shapes just a little bit here. Found a little quirk in Photoshop. Erasing something creates a copy of it. <laughs> uh, any other questions, John? Uh, this one's more of a statement, but um, Ornus uh, said, one of my art teachers told us not to draw trademarked characters. Uh, characters because he was scared it would get us arrested. <laughs> do, do you think that's a major problem? Or? Well, um, I think when you're doing art, you can pretty much do anything you want as long as it's an original work of art. Um, if it's something like, if I were to draw this as, you know, as Wonder Woman and put it in, you know, and put her in a gallery, um, you know, like there's, there's, a, I'm not, again, I'm not a legal expert, but what, from what I've heard is, you know, you're, for, you're protected by your First Amendment rights as long as you're sort of making a statement about that person. You're not just doing a portrait of Wonder Woman and selling it. But if you uh, caricaturize it or you editorialize it somehow, uh, First Amendment protections sort of kick in. Um, uh, always consult with an attorney before doing anything like that, though. Don't take my word for it because I'm definitely not a legal expert. <laughs> Uh, but when you're practicing, of course, I mean, like this, we're just, uh, I'm not even doing a trademark character. It's just, you know, the actress herself. It's not the character Wonder Woman that she plays. Um, I'm not using photo reference of anything from the movie. So um, I think I'm fine here. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. But, uh, you know, I mean, there's a ton of fan art out there in the world. And for the most part, everyone's allowed to just do that. And uh, the, the, I think the more problems you run into is, is the places where you would run into problems if you try to market it and sell it somehow and be, uh, you know, monetize those characters. Oh, this one, this one did not work out at all. So yeah, a lot of times it's just a failure. <laughs> and this one just, just doesn't look like her. So I'm going to go ahead and not even save it. I'm going to delete that. So that happens sometimes. Let's go back and bring our uh, other sketches back here. Here's the uh, third one I did. Second one, that's okay. And the first one. 
Well, of course, I'm still leaning more towards the first one. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to actually uh, take this and try to build upon this success and exaggerate this just a little bit more. Put that just down there. So again, I'm working from uh, this photo here on the upper portion. So I'm going to take the decision that I had here and make them just a little bit more extreme. Kind of an upward slant to her eyes when she smiles. Make those eyebrows even thicker. Give her a little bit of a forehead there, but not much. I do like the idea of a really tiny forehead. And I'm also exaggerating the angle of the head a little bit here too, or it's become really uh, tilted. But that's okay as long as I'm consistent within the, the whole head itself. You know, so as long as the features line up as best I can. I'm not too worried about the alignment perspective. I mean, I will if I decide to take this to a finished stage, I'll have opportunities to correct those errors in alignment. But uh, the main thing I'm here interested in here is figuring out the best way to exaggerate her likeness. Okay, there goes that problem with the jaws and the cheeks again. Let me see here. I'm going to just try to work with that, make it a little bit wider of a cheek. So they can make that work. You ready for another question? Sure. Um, do you advise practicing caricaturing features separately? Uh, such as like eyes, noses, etc., as practice, or do you recommend uh, going all in and practicing as many full faces as possible to grow as an artist? Um, that's a good question. Uh, for this type of caricaturing, no, I would not think you'd have much benefit from studying caricaturing features. You're better off studying realistic portrait drawing of the features. Like figure out exactly how an eye works in a nose and uh, in the mouth in a realistic portrait way. You, you know, I would look at Stan's earlier uh, lessons on drawing uh, the head and features uh, because you're going to rely on that anatomical knowledge when you're doing your caricatures. Um, the only reason I would recommend uh, practicing individual facial features in caricature is if you're learning to be a quick sketch caricature artist and you're trying to create a visual language of how I how you would do an eye or how you would do a nose and that will be that style that you will be using it's it's uh, basically just you're practicing your your ability to draw a feature super fast with a certain kind of line quality and uh, if you're doing quick sketch characters in a live environment like a live retail setting or in an entertainment aspect, yeah, then maybe. But uh, for this type of thing, no. I would just say study the study the realistic anatomy of the features, and that will help your caricatures, uh, just as a side benefit. Hmm, let's see here. I'm going to. This angle is getting a little wacky. I'm going to rotate this a little bit here. Yeah, so okay, I like the way it's heading. It, it needs some work. Um, I, I still think I like do like my first sketch a little better than this one, but uh, um, it, it, it's I don't feel it's quite as exaggerated as it could be. That's for sure. So that's something I might explore in a subsequent step. Is is taking this likeness here and uh, when working with that, uh, building upon that. 
the next step. But uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and move on to our next subject. Let's see who that will be. Let's try, let's see, Michelle Obama, I guess. Galatica wants to know, do you think caricatures uh, can help with monster design or vice versa? Oh, yeah, I would say so for sure, because all monsters and creatures you see in film, television, and comics, they're essentially built on human models. They generally have distorted human anatomy. Uh, so you'll, you can use caricature practice as a way to explore different character types that might work as monsters, you know, like, um, you know, if you look at, I don't know, just uh, like Hoggle, the character from the Labyrinth, who was the, uh, the the goblin character, I think it was a goblin, I'm not sure, uh, but he had a basically a distorted human face, like an old man's face, uh, but just blown out to a really strong degree, and it was kind of comical. It essentially was a caricature of a real person, uh, but it served as a great creature design for the movie. So, yeah, definitely. The caricatures, I think, would help that, and, and study as many uh, types of faces as you can, old, young, heavy, thin. Um, yeah, and I think you can definitely benefit from that. Okay, let's get back to drawing here. So, um, again, I feel like I'm pretty loosened up. I'm just trying to create sort of an interesting head shape based on what I see. I'm gonna use the photo here in the upper, uh, the, the top photo as my reference. So some, th some of the features I notice about Miss Obama here are uh, close together eyes. And one, one eye is like always a little more open than the other. They're, they're kind of asymmetrical. Uh, it's more obvious in the front views, I think, but uh, when she smiles. So I'm gonna try to capture that, even though it's, uh, this is more of an extreme three quarter view. Let's say kind of a short nose, downward uh, point to it. Very large smile, nice big teeth, very fun to draw. Whenever I've drawn Miss Obama, I've always, I think, drawn her smiling because she's very distinctive that way. She's a very distinctive smile. And her smile is always a little crooked too, kind of like her eyes. Uh, it's it's more obvious in this photo here, uh, the uh, the middle one here, where her lower lip tends to droop a little bit on on the on our right side, on her left. And where she smiles really big, it's like that uh, uh, the bottom lip is a little crooked. So little things like that are unconscious reminders of who it is. If you so if you if you miss on that, if you miss a subtle asymmetry in your sketch, it it you may not quite get as strong a likeness as you might otherwise get if you had captured it. So really try to pay attention to those uh, smaller details. A, a good caricature isn't made up of, you know, the, the details aren't always really that important, but sometimes they are. <laughs> Especially if you're drawing more realistically, like, like I am. You can definitely draw more comically and simply uh, and still get really good fun likenesses. But uh, yeah, I, draw, I tend to draw very realistically in a portraity type way, so I want the anatomical references to be accurate to what's going on in her face. Oh, I'm losing some of my pressure sensitivity here on this pen all of a sudden. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's a new one there. All of a sudden he's now become like a uh, mechanical pen sketch. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Uh, I mean, I keep that. No reason to throw away the sketch or redo that. That's, that's fine. I've got basically what I want down there. That's kind of a fun exaggeration. Uh, let's go ahead and open my images again. While you're doing that, ready for another question? Sure. Okay. Um, Heyun Park wants to know, is the typical anime style fan art 
um, does that still count like as a form of caricature? Um, I'm mixed on that. Um, I tend to think of anime as just uh, it's, it's, a, it's a style of drawing kind of like the way the Simpsons have their own particular style of, of designing the Simpsons characters. Uh, so like when you have a, a special guest star on The Simpsons who's a real celebrity, they try their best to make it look like that celebrity, but it doesn't always because they're sort of limited by the visual language they've established in that cartoon. In anime, you know, there is a wide variety of anime, but uh, it, it does tend to have a distinctive look and a visual language that might hinder your ability to actually get a good likeness of an individual in an anime style. Um, so I would say practice anime if you want to do anime or manga style comics, but uh, they don't lend themselves well to caricature, I don't think, because it is just, a, like I said, a little limiting in what you can do uh, based on the visual language you're giving with anime style characters. I'm actually going to um, try to caricature differently from the exact same photo like I talked about earlier. So actually, let's keep this one visible. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, Shrink it down so we can see it while we're working on the other one. Keep that down there. And I think I can improve upon that for sure. Let's try a different head shape when it's a little shorter and wider. But it's still going to have some of the same traits I talked about earlier, like uh, the close together eyes and eyes that are asymmetrical and sort of the arching eyebrows. There's going to be rearranged in a slightly different configuration. Still has pretty tall hair, though. I'm going to include that. Um, someone wants to know, have you ever tried designing like original character, uh, original characters that are caricatures? Mm, I'm not sure if I t entirely understand the meaning of the question, but I have done uh, character design for uh, film and television projects that incorporated caricatures of real people. Uh, so I, th I think that might be what you're asking. Yeah, not my own characters, but for a, for a client. I can't really talk about the specifics of it because it was a movie project. It might still be in development. I never really know. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I haven't, I've done that in a sense where I've had to do, uh, you know, I've had to make the, the, the angles and work. I had to make the character work from different angles. It's because the animators had to take it and make it a turnaround view. And I like to think that's what my uh, caricatures are. Some of the, one of their strengths is, is that they're more three-dimensional. Not this one in particular, but uh, in general, that's what I try to strive for is a realistic three-dimensional looking caricature that can work from different angles. This one definitely is not working, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete that. Let's try another variation on the theme here. Let's try... Shorter forehead, wider cheeks, longer lower face. So that's the basic concept right there. And then I make the features sort of fit into that. Really, really close together eyes on this one. Someone wants to know if you brought uh, the fruity drinks for ladies' night. <laughs> no, but I wish I had. Oh, man. I love me a good apple teeny. Maybe we'll go out, we'll go out later and uh, get some cold Proco yeah. too. Yeah. On Stan's credit card? Yeah. yeah. Drinks on Stan.
Okay. Not not bad, not bad. I think this is actually heading in a decent direction here. Um, a lot of times when doing thumbnail sketches, you have to be very um, forgiving of yourself and look for the potential in each drawing. Uh, it's it's real easy to be hard on yourself when you do these really quick rough sketches and, and just say, oh, I'm a terrible artist. These are so such bad quality sketches. I'm never going to be good. Uh, but remember that caricature is a multi-stage process. At least it should be when you're learning it. It's it's you, you do it in baby steps and you start with the simple shapes like this. You start with a, a basic concept, no matter how rough it is, and you like a gold miner, you dig and you dig until you find the gold that's hidden within it. And uh, a lot of my sketches that, you know, a lot of my work that you might see, the finished paintings that I have in my portfolio, they all started out like this. They started in a very rough, ugly stage where it didn't look like much. It just had the grain of an idea. It had the, the essence of the person in it, but not much else. It was just a kind of a rough, ugly sketch. Yeah, so that, that's, you know, I can see that in there. It's not a perfect likeness for sure, but it has some things in it that I like that I could see how I could develop them a little bit more. Let's move on to another subject. All right, let's try, let's try Daisy Ridley. She played Ray in the, uh, the Force Awakens last year. Okay, so I've got two two good views here that I can use. I'm going to do the more extreme view. The the one on the top I think is a more fun, interesting view of her head because it's a, turned a little bit more. That's what I see when I first look at her. Is this sort of wide? I don't know what you call it. Not quite a hockey puck shaped head, but uh, something that's a little shorter and wider than the average. She has a very broad forehead and wide cheeks, wide jaw, kind of a short chin. And I could, I could picture all of her features sort of scrunched up in the middle of her face. So let's do that. And hopefully you start to get that happening with you on your own sketches is you start to see it in your mind's eye before you draw it. You start to get some inner workings happening and that, that's great. That's what you want to do is you want to draw the caricature in your head first, even if it's vague and fuzzy, uh, and then you crystallize it on the paper. I think her eyebrows are kind of close to her eyes, but they are still going to have a nice arch to them. Again, her nose doesn't really strike me as large or small. It's just sort of average. But since I am trying to make everything fit onto a small space here on the face, I'm going to end up shrinking the nose down a bit. Sometimes you just have to kind of, you know, just use the geometry of the space you're given to help make your caricature decisions. Mouth, though, very big uh, smile, big teeth again, like on Michelle Obama. <laughs> it ends up curling up over the nose a little bit. That's kind of funny, too, in a caricature. That's all right. Uh, JB wants to know, how do you decide if a caricature is good? I know you said likeness, but is it just a gut feeling? On some level, yeah. Um, in the, in this stage, though, it's it's the likeness is something that you know it's it's definitely not going to be perfect. Uh, at least not the way I draw. I draw too loose and fast to really get decent likenesses on the first pass. I just want to see what I like to call the grain, or uh, you know, of the likeness, just a hint of it, and that's enough to kind of make me want to pursue that particular sketch. Um, so, the, like these early ones won't be very useful. I mean, they won't be very. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what the word is I'm looking for. They're not going to be resolved. Um, but it's sort of like, it almost might be like a personal language when you're talking to your own self, your inner self about what's working and what doesn't. Because I may look at a certain sketch and I see potential in it that people at home watching this may not see when they look at it. But it's because I know what I can do with certain shapes that I'm giving. If I can pull a stronger likeness out of there. Uh, I sort of have a certain type of face shapes maybe that appeal to me more. And that's when I can see in the in the thumbnail sketch a particular three-dimensional quality that uh, even if it's sort of loosely indicated and not fully resolved, if it's in there, I can, I 
can usually see it in my own drawings. Um, they're sort of like, you know, they're just your shorthand for yourself. If you're taking notes in a class and your, your handwriting is really scribbly and you're using shortened versions of words, maybe you're doing your own form of stenography that only you know about. And that's kind of like what this is like. So um, people may not look at my drawings and say, oh, that's, that's going to be, that they might think it's not going to be a very successful drawing based on what they're seeing. But uh, hopefully they can see it. It's just uh, a lot of the times if you try to show it to someone else to get their opinion on if it's a good likeness or not, and you think it is, and, and like show it to your spouse or your person, your, your roommate, and they say they don't see it. And then you get down on yourself and you try to rework it. You start from scratch. You start from the <laughs> drawing board. And, uh, and you don't really have to. So a lot of times, don't listen to what other people are saying. Other times, maybe their input is helpful. Uh, it's not, there's no easy answer really to, to when you hit upon that likeness. It's just kind of like you know it when you see it, and only you can really see it in your own drawings, I think. Uh, but don't discount the advice of people around you because, you know, the, the layman's opinion can be valuable. If maybe you are, you know, barking up the wrong tree and, and it takes something someone else to point it out to you because <laughs> you've been staring at something for too long sometimes and you don't... Uh, uh, sometimes you get wrapped up in it to you make your, you convince yourself that is a better caricature than what it is. Um, so, yeah, there's no easy answers, and it's uh, always a struggle. So, <laughs> everyone want to keep doing caricatures? <laughs> okay, I spent too long on that one, but I do like the exaggeration on that one. Again, it's 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 a little bit extreme. It's maybe your face is squashed a little bit to the point where it doesn't quite work out. I would not take this particular sketch and and start painting it. Uh, I would need to resolve it, you know, figure out the anatomy a little bit better. But I do like it. Um, let's try another one of her, though. Just, uh, like I said, once you get a successful sketch, don't just stop there. You want to keep on going to push yourself to see what else you could do that might make it even better. So let's get, let's just go ahead and just put that, uh, instead of getting rid of it, I'm going to shrink it down. We keep it on screen, has some inspiration. Or to remind ourselves where we've been and uh, not to repeat those same steps. Let's try, yeah, let's try a taller head shape, but still, still kind of squarish, so squared off around the edges. I do like the funny wide head, and I may end up going with that, but like I said, I want to walk down this street a little bit further and not give up too soon and you know rest on my laurels. I am working, I think, primarily from the same photo. I haven't really switched to the lower photo yet. I like, like that angle. Again, a very large, toothy smile. Uh, Senzo wants to ask, um, is it difficult to caricature a pretty or handsome face and keep it attractive? Um, yeah, we I discussed that a little bit when we first started here. Um, it can be for sure. Uh, like there, there are different types of handsome and pretty. Uh, there are people that are very close to the average and pretty, and there are people that are very distinctive looking and odd looking but pretty. You know, I, you know, uh, Barbara Streisand. I think she's a very attractive woman, but she's very distinctive. She has a very large nose and certain things about her that are very memorable. And you can definitely find things to caricature on her a little bit more easily and still have an attractive character of the person. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a mixed bag. There are people that are going to be harder for you to caricature. That's, that's for sure. And um, it may not be the same for everybody. Like for years, I, you know, even today when I still try to draw Jay Leno, I have a lot of trouble. You might think he might be a really easy person to caricature because he has very distinctive facial features, but uh, I failed on him way more often than I've succeeded. I have a couple of him that I kind of like, but um, 
it's just uh, you never know what kind of face is going to actually give you trouble until you start drawing it. And uh, maybe with Jay Leno, I thought maybe I thought it was going to be too easy, and I took it for granted. You know, I thought, oh, he's going to be easy to draw, so I don't need to think as much. And so maybe part of my critical thinking faculties turned off a bit. And uh, so people with very distinctive features could also give you trouble. You just you never know until you start drawing them. Okay, yeah, that's okay. It's uh, not, this definitely isn't as fun a picture as the other one. Um, I'll keep it here and just uh, shrink it down, and we'll try another one of Miss Ridley. Put that over there, I guess. Oh, she has a little bit of a ponytail or something happening back there. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the front, the uh, more the, the bottom, the bottom photo there. This head's a little bit uh, a little more tapered as it goes down. Let me see if that makes a difference. One thing that I think kind of worked on the first sketch is how I sort of scrunched her eyes and her nose together. And even the mouth, to a certain degree, kind of came up a little bit higher. Maybe I can uh, find a way to do that on here, too, on a different head shape to keep that going, because I think that's funny, and I think that's accurate to her likeness, is pushing and squashing her features all together. I've also got the added difficulty of doing a, more of a head tilt. She's leaning back, so we see, you know, underneath her nose and the bottom of her chin, and her face shape really changes uh, when she's raising her face versus when it's level. So when you're picking photo reference, just be aware of the head angles that you're going to have to be drawing them at. Um, some people have angles that work better for their likeness than others. Like for some people, I might try to, I might, you know, prefer to draw a profile or an extreme three-quarter view because that's for some for the, for the whatever reason how their face is constructed. Uh, they might look more distinctive that way, and some people are more recognizable some from a front view. This one seems to be developing all right. I kind of like the direction that it's going. It is similar to the first thumbnail sketch, but a little different. It's like a variation on a theme. I kind of wish her hair was down in this. I don't know. It's uh, drawing this pulled back hairstyle is a little bit, I don't know. It's just uh, different. I'm not used to doing that. Although most of us know her from you know, The Force Awakens, where we see her hair pulled back the entire movie. So maybe it is a uh, good hairstyle to draw her in. I just wish there was a little bit more in the back to make her not look like she has short hair. Yeah, so that, that's all right. It's not, again, not the best. I, I still think I like that first sketch. It has the most potential. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to uh, a new subject. Any questions coming through at this point? Jazz Galaxy asked, um, with so many people making art now and so much art available, do you ever get discouraged by asking what's the point of 10,000 people have already done this? <laughs> no, I, I don't think about everyone that's come before me or that's working at the exact same time as me doing similar things. Because the world's big enough for all of us and for all of us to find a market and to find clients. And, uh, you know, if we all gave up on what we wanted to do because there's somebody else doing it or a lot of other people doing it and doing it better, you know, we would not be living our dreams. We would be giving up way too soon. Uh, so, I mean, it doesn't even really enter my consciousness. I don't think about uh, the rest of the world when I'm just doing my little job in my studio. So here we have Ms. Beyonce. I've got a few different angles on her head because it's uh, uh, different. Uh, every, every time you look at her, she looks different to me. Uh, every hairstyle, every expression. Uh, so I try to find the, the photos that make me think of her, that, that 
scream Beyonce. Uh, it's really hard to find good photos sometimes. A lot of performers look very different from week to week, even with the way they change their looks. So um, that's something I struggle a lot, especially with uh, musical artists. Lady Gaga, for instance, she's always changing her look. You really have to dig down to find the actual facial construction that's uh, underlying it all. So I have a few uh, side views, and I probably, I mean, I I don't think I'm going to draw from them. I'm going to draw from the front view, but I like to have the profile views uh, available to look at to see what's happening because she has, for instance, on this uh, side view down here, the one that I'm enlarging, she has a very distinctive nose. It's kind of a uh, convex shaped nose. It's not like a ski slope nose. It doesn't have a ball on the end of it necessarily. So that's something that I might not be able to tell from a front view necessarily. It has sort of a, like I said, a convex slope. And uh, I can see that her eyes sort of sit really shallow in their sockets. That's another thing that may inform my decisions when I'm doing the caricature. She doesn't have deep set eyes. Um, doesn't have a very large chin. In some of the views from the front, it might you might be tempted to give her a very large, long chin. Uh, but uh, she has sort of just an average, petite, small, round chin in the side view. So the, the, the side views are really informative in helping me make my decisions when I do my front views. Let's see, which one am I going to try? I'm going to do the uh, this uh, photo on the lower left where she's making sort of an interesting, uh, interesting facial expression. So I'm going with the most obvious thing first that I see is sort of a, a face that's widest at the middle and tapers down at the chin and also tapers at the forehead. To me, her eyes look very uh, wide set on her face. I was separated by quite a distance. Someone wants to know if uh, Stan was a good student. <laughs> Stan, a good student. Yes, he was always ready to learn and uh, rarely uh, crack jokes or anything. No, he's, yeah, no, I mean, I'm trying to think of something funny to say about it. But yeah, Stan was always a good, serious student from a young age. Uh, I remember when he came into the school, he was still in high school taking classes. And uh, um, he's changed a lot since then, but uh, kind of jealous. I wish I'd started at, uh, at serious art school when I was as young as Stan. I'd be a little further along in my uh, art progress if I had. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's. Uh, yeah, Stan was always a good student. Uh, always had a serious mind and really wanted to learn and came to work ready to go. This is uh, Luke's sketch is starting to grow on me because of the hair. <laughs> Pretty scratchy and rough, but it's kind of the essence that I think is in there. Not too bad. It's not extremely exaggerated. On some faces, it's kind of harder to figure out which direction to exaggerate um, the face. So that's when it, uh, the thumbnail sketching process really does help. So I'll take my first success here and maybe build upon it and uh, take my decisions and make them a little bit more extreme in the next version rather than, rather than trying an entirely different new head shape in the next one. I might just build on this. Like I said, it's definitely not a finished likeness. It's it just got that essence, that grain of truth to it and that I want to exploit and bring into my next sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and actually shrink that down. See if I can make this a little funnier now. Keep that over here. Keep these other pictures in view. Do you have a favorite Beyonce song, Court? 
I don't know any of your music. Sorry <laughs> to say. I know that "Put a Ring on It" song. That's about it. <laughs> Put a ring on it song. Yeah. Some people find when you're drawing a musical, you know, a performer, maybe listen to their music while you're caricaturing them. Couldn't hurt. Might help you get into the feeling of, you know, might help inspire you in your creativity. I, although some jobs I've had, I wouldn't want to listen to the music of the person I have to draw. Is that like the heavy metal? Uh, or? No, um, I had to do a bunch of American Idol sketches. Uh, not a bunch, a few of them for a company a few years ago. and. Actually, Beyonce was one of them I had to draw about eight years ago. Um, that's when I barely knew who she was. But uh, anywhere from the Austin Powers movie, that was about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I had to listen. I mean, I didn't have to. I had to draw Bruce Springsteen. And sorry, I'm not going to listen to Bruce. Do not care for him whatsoever. And I know I'm going to get a lot of comments on that. But just can't stand the sound of his voice. <laughs> that's it. Making bold statements here on the live cast. I think the nose could probably go smaller on her as well. Maybe the mouth could go bigger. The character, the hair can definitely become part of the caricature, and you can exaggerate that as well. If they have really distinctive, you know, large hair or whatever, uh, that's definitely something you can play with and have a lot of fun with. Yeah, not uh, not horrible. I think definitely it has potential. It might take a true Beyonce fan, though, to let me know if it uh, really looks like her or not. It's okay. So, yeah, every time I see her, she looks, you know, just a little different. And I probably wouldn't be able to recognize her on the street if I saw her. Someone would have to point her out to me. Yeah, I think it's better than the first sketch. At least uh, it feels a little more accurate. If not very exaggerated, I, I don't really see actually much more exaggeration in this one than I see in the first one, but it does feel a little more uh, closer to what I was striving for. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to another uh, another subject. Who shall we draw? What about R Rihanna, another singer? Again, not really familiar with her music. I'm more familiar with her on Saturday Night Live <laughs> than, uh, than her actual music. I like her uh, shy Ronnie sketches. So yeah, this is another person with very distinctive look that, you know, she's pretty, but has a very unique facial construction that I think is going to be fun to caricature. Uh, to me, like what I, it's really obvious in the profile view again, like that she has a very prominent large forehead, um, kind of a large chin as well, and all of her features, kind of like Daisy Ridley, were sort of scrunched up into the middle of her face. Uh, I also think uh, she has, you can see in the front view, sort of wide set eyes that are separated by quite a bit. So I'm going to try to incorporate that into my sketches as well. So I will start with just a front view um, from the photo in the upper left corner, I guess, just to sort of get warmed up. But I definitely do want to try a three-quarter or a profile view on her as well. So kind of an almost an average looking head shape until you see where I'm going to place the eyes down there. Kind of low on the head. And scrunch that short nose up 
close to the eyes as well. And this particular expression she's doing is great because she is pushing her lips up closer to her nose as well, giving a uh, sense that her features are all trying to uh, devour one another <laughs> in her face. Love it, it's hair that sweeps over her face. I love when people have very distinctive looks and they just take control of their image and do something unusual because it makes my job a lot more easier and fun. Um, you know, sometimes you know you see people out on the street, you're like, why are they wearing that? Or why do they cut their hair like that? You know, but uh, in reality, I really love it. I go, thank goodness for people like that, that just, you know, make bold statements about their look. You know, that's, that's so great really to be, to show your individuality because you, you know, you just, uh, it's not just all about you know uh, your public persona and just getting the attention. It's just you're, you're expressing yourself and making it easier for character artists like me to find things to you know <laughs> to, to find the likeness. Have you ever done like uh, prints as a caricature? Prints. I think I've tried sketching prints a couple times, but I've never uh, really tried. No, not to, uh, very seriously. I, I thought about it when he passed away earlier this year. Um, but I never got around to it. So I gotta put that on my list. Got a caricature prints. Okay, yeah, I like that sketch a lot. I'm going to do a different one though. I'm gonna try her face from a different angle. I'm gonna use the photo in the lower left corner, I think primarily. It's a little fuzzy, uh, not a great quality photo, but uh, it does show her from the angle that I kind of see her most at or where I think she's most distinctive. Now she's not scrunching her features up in this one, but I think I'm still going to keep that lip, those lips close to the nose, because I think it's an exaggeration choice that works well. Push out the lower lower lip a little bit, because I see that happening in other photos as well. So you don't always have to be totally literal to the exact photo that you're working from. If you have a few different photos, from different angles, and different expressions, and you want to combine some of them, uh, I think a lot of caricatures do that. Um, and I, I know I do for sure anyway, so uh, if it works better to have a particular expression but you don't have the right head angle for that expression, just if you can, try to hybridize the two photos and make them work together. It's a little more difficult. It's, it's kind of more advanced stuff, but uh, you end up having to do that a lot in, in professional work, I think. So oh, cool, that's kind of the statement I was hoping to make. It's kind of like the way that's turning out. Yeah, over, I like the weight distribution of the head, this gigantic <laughs> forehead and massive hair on top of the head. That works really well. Okay, yeah, let's um, move on to the next person here. If I was working at home alone, I probably would be doing slightly more variations of, of these faces. Uh, but uh, I kind of want to keep this interesting and show my decisions on lots of different faces to help give you guys uh, more inspiration or guidance that you might not otherwise get uh, seen. Uh, you know, if I just stick with a couple faces and um, you might want to know how I might draw an older person versus a younger person. Well, let's, let's actually try that now. Let's, I got another one here of uh, Miss Hillary. Um, very different facial type from what we've been doing. And uh, just to try to preempt it, we don't need any politically motivated comments in the comments section. If you can re avoid that, that'd be appreciated. Let's keep it uh, neutral. <laughs> so she has an interesting face that 
traditionally has been kind of hard for me to caricature in the past, but I think the more that I draw her, the more I get used to the shapes that I'm seeing. But she looks very different from different angles and from different expressions, especially. When uh, in the top photo, for instance, when she smiles, her teeth look gigantic and big and her mouth looks really large. But when she has her mouth closed, like, or not open quite as large in the, like in the middle photo, uh, she looks like she has a very small mouth. It's sort of uh, d difficult to decide which direction to go for her. And I think it's really dependent on the photo that you see. And she has a very rubbery face that can look different in different situations. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to try the uh, middle photo, I guess, to work from where it has the more uh, subdued expression. And she doesn't have a, a huge nose, but it is kind of long, I would say, on her face. She doesn't have a chin, I would say, that's very large or prominent. Um, so that's one of the things I think could shrink if you're deciding what to make larger and what to make smaller on a face. Uh, like for her, I think, you know, her cheeks and jowls are kind of prominent and large features on her face. But uh, uh, yeah, this chin can definitely be minimized, I think, and, and that would help the likeness. Of course, this crazy huge quaff of hair she always has is a distinctive part of her likeness. Yeah, not, not too uh, unsuccessful, I think. Uh, definitely a good start. I've, drawn, I've done worse. Okay, let's try uh, the big smiling expression in the upper photo. It's sort of the same angle that I'm drawing her from the other one, but uh, they're totally different expression. It's really going to change her facial geometry. Let's get these two next to each other. So I'm still going to start with the head shape, I think, here. It's, I like that wide face. Let's make it even wider, though, wider and shorter. I'm going to go ahead and start with the first feature I'm going to draw is the mouth because I want it to take such a prominent position. I want to make sure there's room for it. You want to ask yourself sometimes if your subject has a dominant feature or the feature that's trying to grab the most attention on the face and it's not necessarily always going to be the biggest or the it's not related to size like all the time but it could be it's just the thing that's going to be the most distinctive about them that's the one feature that if you get it wrong you're going to miss the likeness uh, well, someone like you know Harrison Ford maybe it's his nose is his distinctive feature not because it's a huge feature but it's very you know it's curved and has a very unique shape to it uh, so not everyone is going to have a dominant feature though something that stands out on them sometimes they're going to be, it's just going to be a combination of everything in equal amounts that if you don't get all the likeness on all the features right, it's, it's not going to work. But uh, the idea of the dominant feature is not, it's, it's kind of a hard one to explain. Like I said, it's not, it doesn't have to do with size always. It's, it's about distinctiveness and uniqueness. I know you've done commissions for celebrities. Have you ever been commissioned by like a politician? No, 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 never by politician. <laughs> Had to draw a few, but yeah, it's always through a newspaper or some other company that's making an editorial statement. I 
This is interesting. She's taking on a different appearance than I thought she would. I, and the characters you draw can sometimes surprise you. Since it's not what I saw in my mind's eye, what's happening here. But uh, uh, let me see if I can kind of make it work. It's not. Yeah, it may not be the most successful one, but we'll, we'll see. Add the hair. Try to finish it up here. It's funny, but does it look like her? I don't know. Someone says she's uh, turning into a squirrel. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, no, this isn't working. <laughs> I tried. Um, let's try it again, though. Don't want to give up quite so easily. Let's try a longer head shape on this one. When something doesn't work, you know, throw out the formula you were using and start a new one. That's, that's what thumbnail sketching is all about, is just uh, variety and experimentation. Uh, Jazz Galaxy wants to know if you've ever turned down a uh, commission before because the cl uh, the client was doing it for mean-spirited reasons. Mm, yeah, yeah, I have. Um, there was one, I think, that um, wanted me to do a caricature of Abraham Lincoln, and I did a little research on the group asking me, and they were sort of a the Civil War isn't over type group, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, and it was going to be a derogatory thing about Abraham Lincoln. And I thought, wow, that's really digging up the past. But uh, I ended up not working for him just because, yeah, I didn't like where they were coming from. And it, it got a weird vibe from them. So, yeah. You, you, you don't feel afraid to turn down work from people uh, that you think is going to be, your, if your work's going to be used for evil, that you, you just can't stand that idea. <laughs> But I have worked for people that I don't agree with politically. You know, I've done you know editorial pieces for clients like that. Uh, but you know, it, the piece itself, when I talked to them, wasn't that offensive. It's just they had a political point to make, and I don't. I try not to let politics enter my own personal like you know decision making too much on if I'm going to do a job or not. But unless it's something that's so reprehensible or offensive that uh, I wouldn't be able to uh, you know look my family in the face <laughs> after I did it. So yeah, you got to. You got to take each piece as it comes and decide for yourself. You know what uh, what lines you you just won't cross. Uh, another question is: Do you always build a face from the outside in, um, or are there cases where you think you should draw the face and then the head? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mentioned that I think a little earlier. I I almost always start with the head shape. It's just what I do. It's what I think works best. Works best for me anyway. Uh, because I think the head determines everything else that's going to happen in the face. I might not draw the whole head in right away. I mean, I might just do like a real loose, like like this was kind of a loose block in, and I'm building the features, and like the, the chin is coming in after everything else has been done. So uh, it's kind of a hybrid, but yeah, I almost always start with the biggest shapes first, which tends to be the head shape. I think if you're thumbnail sketching like this, trying to find the concept for the exaggeration, the best thing you can do is start with the head shape because the head shape really sets the tone for just everything else in the picture. And going from one thumbnail sketch to the next on a person, it's kind of that's the main difference is the head shape. So that's the thing that's going to make your make or break the caricature essentially from one sketch to the next. And let's see, this one, you know, really misses the mark too. I just uh, it's Hillary only in the very vaguest of senses, but I don't really see a good grain of a likeness in here that I can really work with. I mean, maybe a little bit in places, but overall it's just not quite working for me. I think I just generally like shorter head shapes on her than the longer head shapes. Let's try that again. Let's try the front view though. Let's try a different uh, angle. Her head looks really round and short in this, so that will be kind of an easy leap to make. So there's the concept. That's why I like to do the head shape first, because it, it dictates everything else that's going to happen. And I have that concept established now. Now I basically try to make this concept work. 
maybe I'll even do the hair before I do the features as well, how it kind of frames the whole head. If you can see a likeness, and I can, I can kind of see a likeness already at this stage, uh, that's a good sign. Um, now I just have to not muck it up with bad decisions in the, uh, <laughs> in the features, and this might actually work. I hope what you're seeing from all this is that I fail way more often than I succeed in these thumbnail sketches and when I'm doing caricature in general. Uh, it's a process, and it's a development process, where you build upon earlier successes, and you, there's a lot of hunting and pecking and searching for the likeness. Um, so it's not always going to be, you know, a home run on your first try. And I don't want anyone to get discouraged when you're not having success on your first few sketches. You really got to, you know, I've been drawing now here for an hour and a half, and I'm just barely getting warmed up. It uh, takes a long time, and I've been doing this for years. Uh, there are people who, you know, probably, you know, I know can actually get a really good funny sketch consistently on the first go around, and I'm just not one of those people. Not everyone is. I mean, so I don't know what's different about their brains that makes them successful on the very first sketch. Uh, but chances are they've just done a lot and a lot of sketching and drawing throughout their lives and a lot of caricature sketching, uh, you know, a lot of sketchbook drawing. And uh, I think that really helps. It helps you develop better instincts from the get-go. And, uh, yeah, you... Um, the more that you do it, the more flexible your mind becomes, and you're going to have successes more quickly the more that you do it. Yeah, this one's working a little better, I think. It's, uh, you know, it's sloppy and sketchy, but I can kind of see it heading in a good direction. The exaggeration's pretty decent. Could be better. Could be more extreme. Make it clear that this is a chin down here, not the lower lip. Okay, so yeah, I kind of like, I like that. Um, pretty simple. It's not extremely exaggerated, like I said, but it's uh, definitely a good start. Okay, so I think I'll go ahead and take a look now at my all my sketches that I've done and figure out which one I might want to. Uh, spend a little more time on now in the last uh, half hour we have and uh, and uh, develop it into more of a rough sketch. And what I'm going to, what this is, is going to be more of a preview of what's coming up. Uh, our next lesson is actually going to be, not that one, uh, is going to be on what we do with the, the thumbnail sketches. It's turning them into a rough sketch and refining the likeness more. I do like the Rihanna. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, get rid of these here. Yeah, there's the front view Rihanna. Not a, too bad of a Beyonce. Weird Daisy Ridley. Michelle Obama. Gal Gadot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the Gal Gadot, but also I think the Rihanna is kind of the funniest one that I've got and the, uh, the one with the most potential right now. So I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see. I think I'll do the three-quarter view one, but I'll keep the front view visible. I'm just going to shrink her down a little bit here. And then with this, um, there's a couple of different ways you can work with thumbnail sketches. One is you can redraw them entirely, you know, just using them as your inspiration for your rough sketch, or you can trace over them and just try to improve it as you're tracing. And both present difficulties. They're, one's not always the best answer over the other. Uh, you just have to decide on a case-by-case -case basis if you want to try to trace over your thumbnail sketch or, or redraw it entirely. And I think in this case, I am going to try tracing over my existing thumbnail sketch because it is 
kind of there is some good facial structure to it. So I think it it will lend itself well to that because the yeah because like the construction is pretty solid, but it does need some refinement in the shapes and making the features look more like her. So my tracing will be sort of a rough guide. It's not going to be something I'm going to trace line for line. Uh, let's go ahead and get her photos back as well. There's that one. And I'm just going to bring out a couple photos for inspiration in addition to the one I'm going to be actually using. OK. So what I'm going to do is actually just dim down this uh, this layer a little bit and reduce the opacity so you can just see it a little bit and draw in a layer right above it for my tracing. Okay. So I'm going to exaggerate my choices just a little bit more. If something's big, I'm going to make it slightly bigger. If something's small, I'll make it slightly smaller. While at the same time trying to uh, focus on uh, refining her facial features a bit more and how they're aligned. I think the back of the head flows more nicely into the back of the neck now. In this tracing. Maybe you can lengthen her neck a little bit more. Okay, so one of the things I liked about uh, the sketch was, or some of my other sketches of her were the uh, widely set eyes. And so if I, I can put a more wide separation in her eyes in this sketch, that'll be a good achievement, I think. So I don't want to draw the eyes any closer together than they already are. I want to move them out apart from each other if I can. She's pretty heavy lidded, so I'll make her eyelids a little bit heavier there, a little stronger. Her eyebrows are really high up above her eye. So they get even higher. The bridge of her nose pinches down really tight to the front of her face, I think. Very petite bridge of the nose. And then the ball sort of pops back out again in front of her face. A little more roundness to her cheeks there. Let's, like I said, widen the distance between the eyes just a little bit more. Raise the eyebrows up a bit more. Let me know if there's any more questions coming in. Sure. Right now, there's uh, some people talking about animated films, mm -hmm. Zootopia, and how they caricature the animals. Oh, OK. Is there an animated film that does a really good job caricaturing like uh, human features? Or... Hmm. You know, none come to mind right now. I'm sure there are, but uh, I mean, there's not really been any animated features that like caricature real likenesses, as far as I know. Mm. I mean, there's been short films, the films on the internet, and there's a great um, animated short. I forget who made it. Um, you guys out here might know the name of it. I think it's called The Front Page or something like that. And it's in a black and white anim CG animated film. Or it might actually be Claymation. I'm not sure. It might be CG that's meant to look like Claymation. Uh, but it stars a uh, young Kirk Douglas. Uh, what well, looks like the character looks like a caricature of uh, of Kirk Douglas. And it's just brilliant. It's so beautifully done. I think, yeah, I think it's called The Front Page. Go yeah. oh, check that out. It's just, a, again, it's just an animated short, though. It's not a full length feature or anything.
Are there any like gender specific traits that you tend to caricature more on like women rather than men and vice versa? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. I mean, I, uh, I mean, I, I, there are traits in common with, you know, young, attractive females that I guess, you know, I, I do tend to pick up on, um, and maybe play up a little bit like, uh, typically you learn when you're doing quick sketch caricatures, a, a good, quick, easy way to draw most young females, you know, young adult females is to make them look more like younger children, you know, as far as having bigger eyes, the lower face being smaller and the upper cranium portion being larger. And if you do that to, you know, anyone's face, it's going to make them look more childlike. Um, no, I, I don't know if that's necessarily a true thing to, to do with women. That's going to be always successful in a caricature. But, uh, that, yeah, that is a common trait that I think, you know, because women don't have the male testosterone that makes their faces fill out like men do when they get older, I guess, where they get more larger square jaws. Um, you know, when we're all children, we also kind of start out the same general facial type, but women tend to maintain that facial type throughout their lives. Not always, but uh, that's something that might help you when you're drawing, say, a young, attractive female movie star is uh, give them proportions that are more similar to a child's proportions as far as large eyes, big cranium, small chin, small jaw. Uh, but if I were to be doing that right now with my Rihanna caricature, if I was trying to use that formula, it would hurt my caricature abilities, honestly, because she has things that are very different from a child's proportions. Uh, some things are similar, like, yes, I, I'm giving her a large cranium, uh, but, you know, I'm giving her sort of a large you know, prominent chin and uh, full lips and, you know, heavy set eyes. And that's not a childlike feature at all. And her eyes are actually, you know, kind of small on her face. So, yeah, the formula is just there maybe to, you, you think about that to help you sometime, but definitely don't rely on it in every circumstance because, you know, the formulas don't, they, they, they can definitely hurt you more than they can help sometimes. Let's get rid of that skull shape underneath. Some people want you to do a caricature battle with Stan. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I got to do a good caricature of Stan one of these days. I haven't, uh, I, you know, I did a quick, quickie one last uh, last week, and we did the Q and A, but uh, that didn't really count. Wasn't really focused on it. Everyone needs to know ear anatomy. A lot of people overlook that, and you can tell when somebody doesn't know what they're doing inside the ear. <laughs> Ears are very simple, really, when, you, when it comes down to it. Um, they're just intimidating at first because they look kind of complex. But uh, the, I think I mentioned last week the uh, Elliot Goldfinger book on human anatomy has a nice little breakdown of how to draw ears. Uh, Stan, of course, has videos on you know, how to draw the ear. I highly recommend looking at that, the structure and form of the ear. It's real simple. Once you memorize it, you've got it for life, and you can just make up ears. Or if, if the uh, information in your reference photo isn't very good or clear uh, regarding the ears, you can definitely improvise once you have the knowledge how to construct the workings of the uh, form of the ear. Do not like drawing short hair like this. <laughs> you know, you got to try to make it random, but also growing in a pattern, but you don't want to make it look too much like a pattern. Otherwise, it'll look distracting. This is just a rough sketch, too, so I'm not going to get too realistic with it. It's just uh, kind of to indicate what's, what's happening there. Okay, I think I actually have enough here. Yeah, I'm pretty much done with, well, not done with the uh, rough sketch, but I'm going to delete or make the lower layer visible so it's not as distracting. And um, I could continue sketching in like sort of with the crosshatch marks with the pencil, or I could switch to a paintbrush and do a little bit more um, shading with the broad strokes. And I think I like, I'm going to try that. I haven't really demonstrated that yet, but... Uh, 
go ahead and uh, move to the layer beneath, so I'm not painting on top of that, on top of the lines. And I'm still, I still consider this a sketch. It's not really going to be a painting. I'm just using the, a painting brush or a broader brush to fill in and shape the forms. Just I can work a little bit more quickly when um, working with a broad brush rather than with the crosshatch style shading. We don't have a lot of time left, so I wanted to get a little bit more finished on this before calling it quits. I like photos that have good, strong shadows in lighting and highlights because uh, it makes painting a whole lot easier than a flatly lit photo. I try never to draw or well paint from photos taken with a, a flash, uh, you know, just something with natural lighting or something with uh, more controlled lighting that produces strong shadows is going to create a better painting in the end. When working like this, especially when, you know, in, th this is sort of a paint sketch style, uh, work with the biggest brushes I can for a particular area. It's just more efficient. And if you work with too small of a brush, you might get too caught up in finer details, and that's not what this stage is about. I don't want to invest a lot of time in a rough sketch like this uh, if I'm going to end up having to do corrections to it later in the next stage, which we'll learn about in upcoming videos taking a rough sketch to a higher stage of refinement. If any other questions pop up, let me know. Um, do you always work from grayscale to color? Nope. Um, I would only when I'm doing a sketch like this. This I consider, again, a sketch, not a painting. So um, I am working in grayscale. I have experimented in the past with doing a grayscale full, fully finished first and then tinting it with colors, but they always look weird. I never like the looks of the finished paintings when I do that. Uh, they just feel like an old, an old photograph that's been badly <laughs> hand tinted. And maybe I'm just not skilled at tinting colors into my black and white paintings, but you know, if I practiced more, maybe I could get good at it. But I much prefer to just work from uh, color when I'm doing a final illustration piece, uh, just because I like to constantly shift my colors. I you know, like to put little hints of, you know, maybe green on the face or blue, and it's very subtle. But uh, that working uh, a way where you're you're tinting a black and white photo, it, it doesn't lend itself to that kind of painting very well. I'm very much more used to painting a la prima with oil paints. So I like that process of just working with the colors that you start with and finishing with those. And, uh, uh, and um, yeah, I make my decisions as I go with colors. I don't like to like do it in stages, I guess you might say. Do you use colors to exaggerate? No, caricature. No, no I, I try not to exaggerate colors because to me that means making colors that are gaudy or I don't know. I, 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 colors are really just a personal preference. There's really no right or wrong. You have to be consistent with the like the scale of chroma that you use. You have to be if you're gonna if your painting's going to be all in a low key of chroma, a middle key of chroma, or a high key of chroma. You know, very saturated colors. You have to kind of stick within those ranges in other in order to have a harmonic, harmonic harmonious painting. Uh, and I tend to work in a middle to low key of chroma, meaning my colors are not overly saturated. At least I try to. Sometimes they do end up getting a little more colorful than I like. <laughs> and uh, again, it's just a personal preference. It's not right or wrong to want to do one kind of coloring over another. But it is, you know, the most important thing I focus on when doing colors is making sure the values are correct and I'm and my colors are harmonious within the space of the painting that I'm creating. So there's no like foreign colors that are coming in to distract. So I do, if I do put a, say a little bit of a green or 
you know, yellow ochre on a face, it, it, as long as it's like the right value, it's not going to stand out and, it, and you can get away with it. And it's never too garish or bright of a color. So that's uh, kind of rules of color you learn when you're painting more is just things like that. But uh, yeah, I don't uh, exaggerate colors in the sense that I make them more bold than I would otherwise in a portrait. I try to keep my palette similar, whether I'm doing a caricature or a portrait. And uh, this one is kind of low res. I don't really see any sparkles in her eyes, but I'm going to put a little twinkle in there just because it does help liven up the portrait a little bit. And it's possible that because of the angle of the lighting in this photo, there, there is no direct reflections coming out of her eyeballs, but uh, it's something I sometimes add just to, uh, like I said, yeah, put that uh, life in the eye a little bit. you answered this one in your last live stream, but which do you like drawing more, men or women? Um, yeah, and I think my answer was basically I like to draw just whoever's interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, for some reason, there are more men in my portfolio, just, you know, from either just the jobs I've been assigned, uh, because, you know, I don't know, whatever reason, that's just what I get hired to do. Um, and in my just my personal portfolio that are, I've done for my own benefit, I maybe I do gravitate more towards men because I don't know, I feel like sometimes they do have more interesting things going on in their faces uh, in our society because women often have, you know, makeup to hide defects or, you know, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the reason, like, uh, but I don't know. I think it's a reflection of the culture we're in that men still have more of a prominent role, unfortunately, in a lot of, you know, movies and, and the tops of government, uh, so they tend to be the ones we get you know, that get caricatured more more often by a lot of people. Yeah, to answer the question, it's just whoever I find interesting at that moment uh, inspires me. And right now, Rihanna is inspiring me. Someone wants to know how good do you have to be in order to become uh, a professional caricature artist? Oh, um, well. Is there a point in which you? No, oh. there are people all over the spectrum who, people who shouldn't be doing it, who are. Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking a little bit, but there are, I mean, people who honestly are at every level of development who are doing it. I mean, I started doing caricatures professionally way before I, I mean, should have started doing it because I got literally one night of training in the art of caricature, and then they put me in the theme park and had me draw the public, and my sketches were terrible. And they were for a while, for many months or even a year or two before I got better at it. So uh, that just, I think, you know, I was making a living at it. You know, I was in my 20s. I wasn't making a lot of money doing it in, in the retail environment, but uh, uh, I was making money at it, and I was not very, very good. <laughs> um, but it was just like, I kind of had to do it. You know, I just, you're good enough, basically, if you can hold a pencil and you can construct, you know, any kind of face, I think, and you'll be able to satisfy clients and get work. Uh, you don't have to wait until, you know, you have a sign from the heavens that you're ready to start doing caricatures professionally. You're ready when somebody wants to give you money to do a caricature. <laughs> um, that's my answer, I guess. And uh, um, my biggest worry is that people are going to take this course and, be a little bit afraid to start because, you know, there's a uh, 15 lessons we're going to go through before, you know, we're finished, but that doesn't mean you're unfit to do caricatures in the world until that point. Um, you know, start entering Facebook contests. There's a few groups like uh, Caricature Rama Showdown is a really good one to belong to. They have like 20, 30, I don't know, more thousand members right now. And not all of them compete every month or every week. But they have a weekly contest, a new subject, and you can post your work. And sometimes people give you critiques, not usually, but you can see what other people are, are creating in that group. I think there's also the book, is the book face caricature contest still going? I don't know if that's still a thing. Um, but there are groups online, just the caricature proco group, of course, where you can get feedback. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, you know, most 
people in the world don't know a good caricature from a bad caricature, or they don't really know a great caricature from a decent caricature. They think, you know, hey, that person's really awesome, and they've been doing it for two weeks, and and maybe they are decent. I don't know, but um, it's it's surprising what you can get away with, and you know, and have people pay you for in the world of caricature. I, you know, I've been, uh, you know, like I said, a veteran of the theme parks, and I had been working there a few years, three or four years, and I might get a rejected sketch by a customer, and then they turn around and get a sketch done by the guy that's been there two weeks, and they like his, and they buy it. So you never know what someone's going to like. You can never really second guess what people are going to like. You just uh, do what you can, do what you, do your best, and you'll find a market for it. People, someone will, someone will pay for it. Okay, I think that's about all I've got on my uh, sketch of Brianna here. Um, just looking at it, I think there are things I could do a little bit differently. Um, I, I, I really like the idea of playing with her facial geometry more, where I might, uh, you know, sink her eyes deeper into her head and make her forehead pop out more, or uh, may, maybe make the face longer overall, like with the, maybe a longer chin. I think there's lots of things I could do with the exaggeration, and I'm not, you know, so it's not quite there yet, but... Uh, I think it's 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 a decent start. Um, does anybody have any more questions before we uh, before we sign off? We have time for probably one question. more question. Yeah, I'm trying to find ones that we haven't already answered. Mm -hmm. Oh, here here's a fun one to sign off with. If you could draw one person for the rest of your life, who would it be? Ah, uh, I think the person that inspires me more than any other, and I think I mentioned this in my. Um, in the premium video, or maybe in the main lesson, Christopher Walken. He's my favorite face to draw. I could, I could draw him over and over again and constantly be entertained by the process because I just love his face so much. He has such a distinct uh, character type. Um, very unusual looking cat, and I really love his movies and his attitude. He just seems very cool. Uh, but yeah, and Christopher Walken is my muse as a caricature artist. Kruger has the stones and Keith Richards, and I have Christopher Walken, I think. So. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, thank you everybody for joining in and watching me doodle and make ugly scratches on the paper. Uh, I hope it encourages you to, you know, for in your own work, uh, to be more daring and bold and not worry so much about the outcome and uh, just draw, just sketch, and eventually it will come to you. Even if it takes a hundred sketches, you know, don't, you know, I say sometimes half a dozen or ten or just fill up a page, sometimes you'll be drawing a full sketchbook of caricature thumbnails before you get a decent one. And that's okay too. Everybody moves at their own rate, but if you persist, you will succeed in it. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>